Hi. In the previous session, we came to the term genes. So I've told you, Mendel discovered, Mendel told that there are some factors which are passed down from parent to progeny. And those factors, he didn't have any idea what those factors were. But now we know that those factors are genes. So, what are genes? They are units of inheritance. The term inheritance, I hope you remember. Process of passing on characters from parents to progeny. So, in that process of passing on characters from parent to progeny, there are some units actually which are getting passed on. And where are those units found? Those units are found in gametes. So those units found in the gametes, which are passed on from parents to progeny, they are the genes. Genes are actually present in all the cells, in each and every cell. But if it is, if it has to be passed on, if it has to be inherited, it has to be present in our gametes. So, genes are units of inheritance. Okay. Now, I've told you in the last uh, session that in the F1 generation, some characters are expressed and some others are suppressed. Let us give some terms for those characters which are expressed and for those which are suppressed. So, here in this session, we will be focusing on the terms used in genetics. So, first term I have already introduced to you, genes, units of inheritance. The next term is dominant trait, dominant trait, dominant, dominating. From the word itself, you can understand that. That means those traits which are expressed in the F1 generation are dominant traits. In the last session, we we, 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 we got familiarized with those seven characters and their two forms, isn't it? And I told you how he did the crosses as well. So, from those crosses, in, the, in, in every cross he had kept one character different. And from that he got only one character expressed in the F1 generation. So, all those forms which are expressed in the F1 generation are called as dominant forms. But those forms which were not expressed or in other words, which were suppressed in the F1 generation are called as recessive forms or recessive traits. So, dominant traits, traits which are expressed in the F1 generation, recessive traits, traits that are suppressed in the F1 generation. In the previous video, I have listed seven characters and two forms. Those forms which are listed first against each character are all dominant forms. That means all those forms were expressed. You can just check it in my previous video. The list is given. And all those traits which are listed after the, after the, as the second form, all those second forms were suppressed in the F1 generation or all those forms are recessive forms. So hope the two new terms are clear to you. Dominant forms or dominant traits and recessive forms or recessive traits. Okay. Now, a very important new term which is often used in genetics. Alleles. Alleles. Alleles are Alternate forms of a gene. Now what does that mean? Alternate forms of a gene. What does that mean? See? For every character in your body, a gene is responsible. The character that is there in your body may not be there in some other person's body. For example, let us take the pea plant itself. Character height. For the character height, there is a gene responsible. But some plants are tall, others are dwarf, isn't it? So these are the two forms of the character. What is the character? Height, two forms, tall and dwarf. Similarly, for the character height, there is a gene. 
and for the different forms of this character there are different forms of genes and those different forms of genes are called as alleles hope the point is clear there are different forms of character for each character there is a gene and for different forms of this character there are different forms of genes and these different forms of genes or alternate forms of genes are termed as alleles alleles are alternate forms of a gene so very new term for you people i think and this is very important term in the following chapters also we will come across this term so you should know what this term is and what is the difference between alleles and genes gene is responsible for a character for every character there are different forms and similarly for every gene there is there are different forms and those different forms of a gene are termed as alleles okay now let's move on you can see here some letters written here capital letter t small letter t and all now we are moving on to some other forms that is we are going to represent things now we have learned tall trait is there so tall trait tall is expressed in the f1 generation that is dominant for the dominant form i am taking the first letter to represent it that is for tall plant i am taking the first letter capital letter capital t so when i write here capital t i am expressing tall trait or this allele represents tall form okay now when i am writing it as a plant if i am going to express tall plant then you know p plant is diploid i hope you know what is diploid okay so there will be always two sets of chromosomes two n number two sets so when i am representing it as plant i have to write here two times capital t capital t so when i am writing here capital t capital t i am ex expressing tall plant but when i simply write here capital t i am writing about the tall trait on the allele when i write here the allele twice i am writing i am expressing that i am writing a tall plant okay now if i write this as small letter t small letter t i am representing here the recessive form of it recessive form of tall is what dwarf we should not represent it as capital d or small d but always the dominant character is taken into account here the dominant character is tall so i have taken the letter t if i am writing it as capital letter i am representing the dominant trait if the same t i am putting it as small letters it is representing the recessive trait that is dwarf okay now what if i write both together capital t and small t together of course if i write small t and small t together it is dwarf plant as i have written tall capital t capital t together it is tall plant small t small t together dwarf plant but what if i write like this capital t and small t together so you know always capital t is what dominating so capital t will suppress the small t here is shown with arrow capital t is suppressing the expression of small t so i will get only tall tall plant that also represents tall plant so dominant character can be expressed by either writing capital t capital t or capital t small t okay so in both these cases well, how does the plant appear the plant appears as tall okay but see this plant is pure tall both are capit both alleles are same such plants you call it as homozygous plants homozygous for the character height homo same homo means same if it is having same alleles for this character you call it as homozygous so capital t capital t i am representing homozygous tall plant 
If I am writing capital T, small t, what does it represent? It is different, isn't it? So it is hetero. Heterozygous tall plant. Both are tall, but they differ in their alleles. So to show the difference in the alleles, we use two new terms, homozygous and heterozygous. So genes, dominant trait, recessive trait, alleles. Alleles are expressed as letters and you have homozygous dominant as well as heterozygous dominant plant. But take the recessive, we can only express as small t, small t. It is always homozygous. So recessive is always homozygous. Clear? Okay. Now, the experiments that we did, first step was collecting true breeding pea plant varieties. So, true breeding means what? I, even after repeated self-pollination, you are getting only the, the same characters and that's, that's that of the parent. So, see here, true breeding plants will be always homozygous in their alleles. This is the next point, important point. Always true breeding plants will be homozygous. So, here he, I have told you he took in the cross, in the cross hybridization, a tall plant is crossed with a dwarf plant. What kind of tall plant he take among these two? True breeding. True breeding means homozygous. So, when you write the cross, you have to write it as the parent plant is capital T, capital T. So, when I am writing here capital T, capital T, it is understood that the plant is homozygous tall. Next parent is small t, small t. So, here it is again understood the plant is homozygous dwarf. So, both are true breeding plants. We took the pollen grains, dust around to the stigma. So, pollen grain is the gamete here. So, in the gametes, what happens? These alleles separate out. In the individual, they are together. In the gametes, the alleles separate out. Okay, each gamete will have only one allele of a character. Here the character is height. Alleles are capital T, capital T. Each gamete will have only one allele of this character. Another gamete, if I draw here, this next capital T I can write here. So since both are capital T's, I have written here only once. Next is the second parent. It is, it is the ovule. In the ovule, the gamete, it will also have only one allele. So always in an individual's body, in the plant body, there will be two alleles together for every character. But when that plant or that individual is producing the gametes, the gametes will have only one allele of a character. Clear to you, I think. Then, in the F1 generation, the gametes fuse. So see here, capital T, small t. So what did Mendel get in the F1 generation? All tall plants. Why here? Now I think the reason is clear to you. Here, capital T is dominant over small t. So capital T, that is the, the dominant allele will suppress the recessive one. And only tall plants are expressed. Okay. Now, let's move on to another term. Phenotype and genotype. Phenotype and genotype. These are the next new terms. Okay. Phenotype means the character, 
which is expressed externally. Externally, that means you see the plant is tall, that is the appearance, phenotype. Genotype means the allelic forms. Okay, so here if I am writing the plant as tall, plant is tall, I am expressing how it, it, it looks like. So the plant is tall, isn't it? But its genes, its alleles can be different. It can be either capital T, capital T or capital T, small t. So here the allelic forms are called as genotype. So allelic forms or genotype, how do you express it as? It may be either homozygous or it may be heterozygous. So if somebody is asking you what is the phenotype of the plant means how will you say it as what is the external appearance tall or axial flower terminal flower violet flower likewise like what how it looks like that is the phenotype and what about its allelic combination that gives you the genotype. Phenotype and genotype. So, having understood this phenotype and genotype, let's move on to the third step of Mendel. After he had completed his F1, do you remember the next step that I told you? The next step is self-pollination of F1. So what was his F1 progeny? F1 progeny were all tall, but what is the allelic form? Like this we got, isn't it? F1, capital T, small t. Self-pollination, that means stigma is dusted with the pollen grain of the same flower. So capital T, small t. The same flower. Parents are same. Same thing. So I've written here. This is the parent. They are the parents. This is the genotype. Heterozygous tall there. But Mendel did not know whether it is heterozygous, homozygous or not. He just understood. He just looked into the form. That is phenotype. The plants were all tall in the F1 generation. Now after parents. The parents will produce the gametes. Isn't it? Gametes I told you. Each of the alleles separate out in the gametes. So I am separating out the gametes. The alleles have separated. For this parent I have got two alleles. For this parent also I have got two alleles. So I can either take this as the male parent or this as the female parent. Whatever it is the plant is the same. This thing is pollen grain is dusted onto the stigma. Okay. So see here. Now, the gametes, I have got four gametes here. The four gametes can combine in random. So, here I am combining this parent's capital T allele with this parent's capital T. So, I am getting capital T, capital T. This is the genotype. What is the phenotype? Tau. Again, this capital T can also combine with this gamete, isn't it? It's just chances are. So, capital T, small t. This is heterozygous. But, what about the height or phenotype? Phenotype is again tall. Now, take the next gamete. Small t can combine with the first one again. There are chances. So, again, small t, capital T. Tall. It is not necessary that I should always write capital T first or small t first, nothing like that. If I write capital T, small t, that means if capital T is there, it will be tall. The order you can change and write, there is no harm. Next, small t can also combine with another small t here, small t, small t. Both are small t. So what about this character? 
This is actually dwarf. So you can see here, there are three tall plants and only one dwarf. This is what I told you in the uh, previous session. Three fourth, all out of the four, three plants were tall, one fourth. That is out of the four, one plant was dwarf. So this is the result that he got. What is the result he got is, he is getting three tall plants and one dwarf plant. Three tall and one dwarf. This I told you, he had done with all the seven pairs of contrasting characters. Okay, all the seven pairs he did. And always he got three of one character, one of another character. So, we can just come to general conclusion that after doing the self-pollination, after doing the self-pollination of F1, all the F2 progenies, all the F2 progenies, he came to a general conclusion that three of them were dominant and one was Recessive. This is 3 is to 1 ratio. What ratio this is pointing towards? This is pointing towards phenotypic ratio. How the external appearances. That ratio is what is explained here. 3 is to 1. Mendel noted this particular ratio. Now we can note here one more ratio. Genotypic ratio. Isn't it? Genotypic ratio. In that genotypic ratio you see here, these two are homozygous tall. So only one plant is there. So I am writing here one. These two. Two plants are heterozygous tall. So two. These two. One plant is homozygous dwarf. So what ratio is this? One is to two is to one. This is genotypic ratio. So when you are saying about phenotypic ratio, you simply say the character and say the numbers. 3 dominant or 3 tall is to 1 dwarf. But when you are saying the genotype, you have to use the words homozygous, heterozygous. So 1 homozygous tall, 2 heterozygous tall and 1 homozygous dwarf. So this is the conclusion that he got from the F2 generation. So this from with, with this half of his experiments is over that is coming to F1 and F2 taking only one character into account at a time. From these experiments he framed two laws of inheritance. Regarding those two laws of inheritance, dear ones, we will be focusing on in our next session. Thank you so much.